Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to talk about summarize columns best practices. The reason why summarize columns is getting more interest right now is because up to a few months ago, summarize columns could not be used inside measures. The reason for this is really technical and not worth investigating further because it no longer exists. As of today, you can use summarize columns inside your measures. So as a natural question, Dax developers start asking whether it is better to use the old functions, summarize, group by, in order to add columns, in order to build the temporary tables inside their measures, or if summarize column is a better option. Now, the answer is uh, summarize column is mostly your best friend. It is very well optimized, it works uh, really like a charm, and it also works through limited relationships, which is something that uh, summarize columns or add columns do not do. So it is really interesting to use. However, summarize column is extremely powerful. It is a very complex function that implements uh, or exists uh, value filter behavior a lot of features which are really technical and hard to learn. We did uh, a white paper about summarized columns that we published on SQL BI Plus uh, because uh, just one function deserves more than 50 pages of really deep technical content in order to understand exactly how it works. And I know most DAX developers do not want to go that deep. So in this video, I'm going to introduce the best practices with summarized columns. If you don't want to learn all the intricacies of uh, auto exist clustering and value filter behavior, just follow the best practices to start using summarized columns in your measures. Let's get started. What's the reason why summarize columns is powerful and useful? Well, summarize columns is able to determine by itself the best way to group a set of columns and compute measures. And it automatically removes empty values, showing only the combination that makes sense. Let me show you an example. You can write a query like this one, when I'm using summarize column to group by brand, by year, and I'm applying a filter for only the purple color, and I'm computing the sales amount. So in just uh, seven lines of DAX code, I can actually execute a complex query. If you run it, you see that you get the brand, the year, and the sales amount. Now, can you obtain the very same result with regular functions? Uh, yes and no. Because if you were to write the same code with a regular function, Probably what comes to your mind is to use add columns and then you summarize sales. You group it by product, brand, and year. And we still need to apply a filter. To apply a filter, we use an outer calculate table. Uh, calculate table around everything. So here. And then we add a new column. Let me see if the code formats nicely. Yep. So I use an, an outer calculate table to place a filter. Then I group by brand and year. Then I compute the sales amount uh, as a new column that is added to my calculation. And if I run, I obtain the very same result. It is more complicated. It is more convoluted. And uh, to be honest, it is not entirely equivalent. The two problems that this query has is our the first one uh, that summarizes uh, this summarizer uh, that groups by group sales by brand and year works uh, only with uh, strong regular relationships. If you are using a limited relationship like a cross island relationship, uh, then summarize is not going to work. Moreover, it is not entirely equivalent because uh, uh, there are scenarios where the numbers are not exactly the same. Summarize columns actually produces a better result. If you were to obtain the very same result, you should not use summarize. You should do a cross join of uh, uh, values of product brand. So you get the values of product brand, the values of date year. So this cross join generates all the combination of brand and year, and then we compute the sales amount with a filter over color. But if I run it, you see that we get a lot of rows uh, that uh, produce no sales. Summarize columns removes these rows by itself. So we need to add uh, an outer filter around everything. 
that says I'm only interested in rows where the sales amount is not empty. Not is empty. Not is a blank. Sales. Let's format it again. So this query is equivalent to the one that was used in summarize columns. The thing is, the summarize columns version is so much simpler and so much easier to use that it's definitely worth using it. However, you need to pay attention to a few details because, as I said in the introduction, summarize column is extremely complicated. It implements a clustering, it uses the value filter behavior, it implements an unempty. It has a lot of features uh, that might create uh, behaviors that are really shenanigans uh, and you don't want to work with that shenanigans. So what are the best practices? Well, if you need to use uh, summaries, you can use summaries columns to perform grouping. You can group, uh, you can use summaries, for example, to group uh, sales by brand and continent. You can obtain the same result using summaries columns with an important difference. If there are no measures, then summarize returns only the combination of brand and continent that are referenced by sales. And that is mostly what people want to do. You start from a table and you group by different columns and you are only interested in the combinations that exist in the original table. If you use summarize columns this way, in a simple way, saying, oh, I only want to summarize column by brand and continent, this is going to produce all the combinations, all the, cross, the entire cross joint of brand and continent. And that is likely to be overkill. You probably don't want all the combinations. So if you are interested in using summary column this way, you need to add sales as a filter. But at this point, what's the point of using summary columns? You can obtain the same result using summarize or summary column with exactly the same number of rows. The only scenario where this makes sense is when you have limited relationships. Summarize would not work, summarize column would work nicely, placing the filters the right way. So if you need to perform grouping with no additional measures, you can use values if you only have one column, you can use summarize if you have multiple columns, and you revert to summarize columns only if you are using limited relationships. Otherwise, to be honest, it's overkill and not worth doing. The scenario is different if you have a measure, because if you have a measure, you can write a summarize column by brand, continent, and compute the sales amount. You run this code and you obtain by brand and continent the value of sales for only the rows where sales amount does not produce a blank result. That is mostly what people want to obtain when they perform grouping. So this is very short. And if you were to write the same code using regular function, you would write a complex expression like this one. Actually, a more complex expression, as we have seen earlier. Uh, you need to summarize sales by brand and continent, uh, use add columns uh, to compute the value of the sales amount and get rid of rows which are not blank. This is much more complicated and probably even less optimized because you have more DAX functions, so the optimizer will not be able to figure out the best way to compute the value. Using summarize columns is definitely your best option. So grouping with no measures, uh, go back to the original functions, uh, they just work nicely. Grouping with uh, one or more measures, uh, then it makes sense uh, to use summarize columns uh, because it is better optimized and works more nicely. Things are even more interesting if you need to group uh, by some columns uh, and then you want to compute measures, uh, multiple measures that maybe come from different fact tables. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. The model I'm using uh, only contains uh, customers, uh, store, date, and product. Uh, these are the three, uh, four dimensions. But then I have two fact tables, sales and purchases. Uh, and I want to compute a query that groups by category and country. So uh, category is in product and country, probably in customer. And I want to compute the sales amount and the purchase amount. So when you think about that, if you use summarize, you need to state the table you want to start from. So you either group sales or you either group purchases. Summary column does not require you to state the table from where you need to start. Therefore, it is more easy to use. Let me see, let me show you the code. 
You can use summary columns by category and country, so I'm grouping by category and country, and I'm computing the sales amount and the purchase amount. I just run it and I obtain category, country, the sales amount, and the purchases. The R combination of category and country for which we do have sales, but we do not have purchases. Whereas other combinations show both sales and purchases and everything works fine. So why is it summary column so interesting? Well, because if you were to write the same query using regular DAX, you would be in trouble because uh, uh, I already have uh, the query written here, you can use uh, summarize and say, oh, I start from purchases, I group it by category and country, and then I compute the sales amount and the purchase amount. You can write this code, but the result is not going to be the same. If uh, you look at the result, uh, you see that there are no rows with no purchases, whereas uh, the original query includes rows with no purchases. Why that? Well, because I start grouping by purchases. So Summarize produces only the combination of category and country that are referenced by purchases. And if there are combinations not in purchases but only in sales, I will never see those combinations. So this result is actually incorrect. It's probably not what you want to compute. If you were to write an equivalent query to this one, the one that computes uh, uh, by category and country, sales amount and purchase amount, you need to go much, much uh, more complicated. This is uh, the query, let me show you in its entirety, that is equivalent to the previous one. First, we group purchases by category and country, and we compute the purchase amount. Let me show you the content of P. So in the return part, we return P. And this generates uh, a table containing category, country, and purchase, only the combination from purchases. Then I do the same with uh, sales. I summarize sales by category and country, and I compute the sales amount. And if you look at S, that is uh, a similar result that contains category, country, and the sales amount. Now I have two tables, S and P. One contains uh, combinations of country and category, from purchases, the other one contains the combination from sales, I need to build uh, the axis because I might have, as I do have, combinations in one table that are not present in the other one. So I need to union category and country from P and category and country from S. I union the two and because in DAX union is a union or, that table will contain duplicates and I need to do a distinct. If I return AX, you see that the result contains category and country, but now it contains all the combinations that appear in one of the two tables. And finally, I use a left outer join. I start from the axis. I do an outer join with S and then an outer join with P in order to obtain the final result. And if I obtain the result, now you see I have the combination of category, country, sales, and purchases, also the combination where there are no purchases. So, this query, this complicated query, is actually equivalent to this one that uses summarized columns. Which one is better? Well, that's a no-brainer. Summarized columns is way better than the version using the basic functions. So it is worth using summarized columns whenever you can. That doesn't mean you need to go to all of your existing code and replace summarize with su summarize with summarized columns. Don't do that. But in your new DAX code, start using summarized columns. However, there is an important detail that you need to be aware of. That is, a summarized column works fine, but it is really, really complicated. And in the examples we have seen so far, we haven't used uh, the features that I'm telling you not to use. That is, filtering. You might use uh, summarized columns to not only perform the grouping, but also place filters. This query is saying, I want to group by brand and continent, and I want to apply a filter for red or blue. So only the colors which are red or blue. You run this code, it runs, it produces the nice result, and everything is working perfectly. However, the thing is, you should never use the filtering features of summarized columns in your measures. The reason is really complicated. 
it has to do with clustering, auto exist, value filter behavior. And as I said in the interaction, if you are really interested in that, you need to go and read the SQL BI Plus white paper. It's really heavy, but extremely interesting if you are interested in these details about DAX. If you need to place a filter outside of some more columns in your measures, just use calculate table instead. Instead of using the filtering feature this way, so you apply the filter inside some more columns, you use another calculate table, you place the same filter, and then you use some more column to only perform the grouping. As I said, the reason is the reason is really complicated, but there are interactions between the filters created by some more columns this way and the group by column, up to the point that numbers can really be complicated in a useless way. So you, you just spend time trying to understand why you see a number and it makes no sense to understand and to learn the details. Just avoid that. As we said many, many years ago, uh, we suggested our readers not to use summarize to compute new, calcu new calculated uh, columns. The same way, use summary columns, use it to compute new columns, but don't use it to place filters if you just want your DAX code to work nicely. So, as you have seen, summary columns is a powerful function. Up to a few months ago, there, you could not use summary columns inside measures. As of today, you can. Does it mean you should replace all of your existing code, remove summary and replace it with summary columns? Absolutely no. There is no reason to do that. However, summary columns is mostly better than summary and add columns. So, in your new measure, start using summary column because it makes a lot of sense. Just pay attention to the details. Never use the filtering feature of summary columns. Only use it to perform grouping and to compute new calculations. And that is especially useful if you face models where you have limited relationship, where summary column just works, whereas summary requires much more convoluted DAX code. Enjoy DAX! <laughs>